and again. Maybe tonight I am honored just to be in the house of God and I'm here for none other purpose than to be able to rejoice. You know, you know, I've been doing this for a while and uh, normally, now this is twofold, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> but as a bit of side, I, you know, I've, I've created such a great relationship until I, I really wish I could stay three or four more days. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'll have to go. I will tell you that I got in trouble. I did not know y'all was recording these. <laughs> and Mama watched it. And she called and she said, boy, you know you preached entirely too long. <laughs> she did. I told her, I said, I told Sister Lou, when I'm going along to cross her hands, and she never did cross her hands, so I never did get to see her. So I just kept on going. And I know we had, we had a marvelous time. A marvelous time. I, sometimes I do get carried away, and we did stay a little lifted last night. But I want to get up, reach up, and shut up. Uh, I changed my message while I was sitting in that seat. Is that all right? I thought about this because as the Holy Spirit began to tug on the sleeve of my mind, I thought about David's. Revival. David had a revival, y'all. And there's a passage in this in, in, in this Bible that we knew that we read, but we don't relate it to David's revival. You see, David, you remember David was was that little boy who had been anointed to be king. You remember Saul had been rejected. And and, and the Lord told him, go down to Jesse's house and, and pick me another king. You remember. He had lined all of his boys and had all of his boys to line up and they began to march back. And you remember one that was tall and rude. He looked like he had a good looking, just tall. He had, his, he had everything working. And you remember, he, he shouted out and said, Surely, this is he. But the Lord had rejected him. And all the boys had passed. And Samuel said, You don't have. Any no more boys? He says, I got another boy. He's 12 years old and he's out in the shoving sheep down. He said, go get it! And he went and got David. And the Lord said, surely this is he. But David's life went from one extreme to the other. David had some good times and he had some bad times. There was some jealousy. There was some ups. There was some down. And throughout his life, we had a lot of heartaches. When we get to this text tonight, he had a revival. Are you ready to really get David's revival? Yes. Be standing as we read the 23rd Psalm. I have to show you something that I've learned in this text that I, I, I've never knew before. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 23, the Lord is my oh God. I feel the preaching coming too quick. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through. Oh God, that's us, y'all. We're going to go through some valley. Yeah. Through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth the table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our Father and our God which are in heaven. We thank you so much for allowing us to go through this day without any hurt, harm, or any danger. We thank you, Father, for sparing our lives and bringing us to this place for no other purpose than to hear another portion of your word. Father, I don't know why I sit there and decided to change this lesson, but I believe that it's target for some individual tonight. And I believe that when they see the revival that David had after going through all that he went through, that a revival will take place in their own life. So, Father, just move tonight. Move in me. Pump me up. Let me speak your words. Anoint my tongue. Use my mind. Use my heart in order to speak your word. And we'll be very careful to give you praise, give you honor, and give you glory. And all of God's children said, amen. You may be seated. 
For the next few minutes, allow me to talk and let me get my time. Okay, I got it. For the next few minutes, allow me to talk to you from the subject, the real meaning of Psalms 23. The real meaning. Because this psalm has been quoted more than any other psalm throughout the whole Bible. But it is a song that we reach for in the midnight hour when we just can't get no rest. Beloved, this is a friend who had walked in more hospital rooms than doctors themselves. In more classrooms than teachers, more jail cells than inmates. Beloved, it is a song that we quote when we lower our loved one down in the cold place of this old earth. But what does it mean? This song has dried more tears than any other passage in the Bible. But what does it mean? What does this song mean? Well, whatever else it means, it means that if I don't make it to heaven, or if you don't make it to heaven, you have nobody to blame but yourself. No, 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 no. I said if I don't make it, and if you don't make it, you have nobody to blame but yourself. Hold on, preacher. I've been reading this song all my life. I don't see that in this text. I don't know where in the world you get that from. Because I quote this and I don't see anything about heaven. How did you come up with that? Well, can I show you? The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, the first thing you need to understand that the responsibility of the shepherd is to lead the sheep and not run. Yeah. So here's what I got to me. I got, I got, I got, I got the Lord <laughs> in front of me. But that's not all I got. He said, goodness, come here, goodness. He said, goodness and mercy, come here, mercy, come here, man. And mercy shall follow me. Y'all better see this. He said, now, I got the Lord in front of me. I got goodness and, which is a coordinated conjunction, meaning that they're joined together. I got the Lord in front of me. I got goodness and mercy behind me. But that's not all I got. In verse number four, he said, "His rod, come here, rod. I need a staff, come here, staff. <laughs> Y'all missing this thing. He said, now, watch this. Now, come here, rod. I need you over here. He said, now, his rod. And his spell that come for me. Y'all see what I got? I got the Lord <laughs> in front of me. I got goodness and mercy following me. I got his rod and his staff and they come for me. And if I don't make it to heaven, it ain't nobody's fault but my own. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. He said, now, David, now, you got to get this, man. When I learned that this song was about getting on the other side, my whole aspect changed about this thing. Notice now. Notice now. Let, 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 let's take our time. Because David is about to take a transcript, a chapter, a moment out of his own life and out of his own experience and, and relate it to his relationship with God. This is more than just something that we read at midnight. Beloved, this, this, this song has a lot of depth meaning. He is going to make a comparison with his relationship with his sheep, not his relationship with God. Are y'all following me? Beloved, in order to understand the song, there's three things that you must understand about sheep. If you miss these three, you'll never ever understand what David is talking about. Number one, you remember, you remember that nursery rhyme, little old Pete has lost his sheep and don't know where to find him. Leave him alone and they'll come home wagging their tail. You remember that? Cute little nursery rhyme. Ain't but one thing wrong with it. It ain't true. It ain't true. Because sheep is the, they dumb. She has no direction. And she has no built-in defense mechanism. That's why she needs a shepherd. Yeah. That's why they need a shepherd. She is the dumbest animal in the animal kingdom. The sheep has no direction and he has no defense mechanism. Now, wait a minute. David is going to take us and make us sheep. Make him sheep. Well, God is his. Walk with me. What do you mean with God? Well, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter number 14 and verse 
number 12. The Bible says that is the way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end of are the ways of death. Beloved, if we are so smart, then why is it that we read, we read one Bible and come up with over 12 different denominations? How is it then that we read the same Bible, but we cannot conclude with the same thought? The Bible, Jeremiah said, Jeremiah 10, verse number 23, he said, but it's not in man that walketh to direct his own self. Jeremiah said, we don't even know how to do this. That's why we always say, order myself. Because like when you tell God to order yourself, they don't always go up. <laughs> See, you got to order the self, Lord, when you even take it. Back. Jeremiah said that we, uh, Solomon said, he said, he that trusted in his own heart is a fool. Beloved, you better understand something. We are not as smart as we think we are. Brother Dan, I've got my doctor's degree. Great. Great. When it comes down to the word of God, we have left the path. But then not only are, 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 are she dumb, they have no direction. And that's why I just said in Isaiah 53, verse 6, all oh, we are like sheep. Watch this, have gone astray. Every man has torn to his own way, and the Lord has laid up his iniquity upon them all. And the sheep has no defense button. Every animal in the kingdom has something to fight with. The cheetah has his feet. The elephant has his strength. The skunk has its odor. But the sheep, oh God, you gotta see. The sheep don't have any built-in defense mechanism. That's why the man, the sheep, needs a shepherd. And beloved, you and I really don't have a defense mechanism. If we had a good defense mechanism, then we wouldn't fight so much against one another. So when you know how to fight, then you recognize the enemy. Oh, I see y'all the world. See, we got to understand that this war that we're fighting is not internal. Y'all hear me? Right? This is an external war that we're fighting. Did not, did not Paul say in Ephesians chapter six? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh, against principalities, against power, against the ruler of darkness of this world, against spiritual witness. We don't wrestle against that. We don't wrestle against one another. It ought not be a brother wrestling against another. One of the things that just left my heart here in this city, of the way these scriptures are coming together, even in that prayer, how they pray that we continue to come together because they understand who this war is all about. Because if our fight ought to be against homosexuality. Talk back to me if you can. Our fight, and, and don't look funny because it's in all of our family. Ain't no sense in you trying to front up in here that like that crack is in all of our family. And that's what the wall ought to be. Instead of us, instead of us teaching and, and, and grinding our children to grow up and understand how to abstain from those kind of things. We're too busy fighting about, about ourselves. Fight over who's gonna sit in this seat and how long I've been in the church at and it's starting to be it needed somewhere to start. Thank God. Big Mama gave up our house in order to let the church start. But let me tell you something. That's right, Big Mama's trash. This church belongs to, oh God, I wish I had somebody. This church belongs to the Lord. You don't get seniority in here. It's because you've been here a long time. Don't get, oh God, I better go over here. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, I got folk down there where I preach because the church been there since 58. I've only been there 27 years. They run a preacher. I was here before you got here. What that mean? <laughs> what that mean? <laughs> See, I ain't always been saved. <laughs> Let me get back to that. Y'all better watch it. See, we got to understand and recognize the fight. And I'm telling you, man, whenever I told your preacher today, I said, preacher, can you keep the building a church? I'm telling you, if I had this young man's evangelistic spirit, mm -hmm. we got to build a whole nother, uh, we got to have a whole nother place. Amen. I never see, we were, we were out. Uh, and, and I used to do it. And I, and I don't know why. I, got, I told my uh, administrative assistant, this meeting has been better for me. And I think because I've been rejuvenated about just winning something. You know, all of my 
my soul went in, it's coming from the book, but this is not where it comes from. The, the commission is to go ye therefore and teach all nations. Let me tell you something. We got to teach folk how to teach. But you can't teach somebody how to teach if the people you're trying to teach won't show up. Some of us been in the church long and most have stayed in the wilderness. Watch this. He said, I 
I shall not walk. It is the responsibility of the shepherd to take care of the sheep. But watch verse 2. Don't fold your hands on the sister. Don't get hands on the <laughs> watch this, watch this. He said, he maketh me. See, we don't go back and find out what this means. He said, he maketh me to lie down. Beloved, I want you to know, he that leadeth me, make me. Why? Because many times, David's sheep would run off. They would run off. And as a shepherd, he would go get his sheep and he would crack their front legs. And he would make them lie down. David now reflects back on his own life. He, did, so he thought about the time he had been persecuted by King Saul. He thought about the time he badly escaped assassination attempt on his own life. He thought about how his whole family was, was kidnapped. And look how he suffered shame and how he uh, contended for, for adultery and murder. And how his son Achnon raped his daughter Tamar. And how his other son Achnon murdered uh, Achnon. He said, God, you made me. To lie down. All right. Can I tell you All something? Right. God makes us lie down. Yeah. Every now and then, every now and then, He has to make us yeah. lie down. Yeah. That's why when you went and found out you had a lump on your breast, He didn't deliver you. That's why he, you found when your prostate was elevated, He didn't deliver you. Yeah. When you worked on your job for 22 years and got laid off, yeah. He allowed that to happen. All because right. sometimes God has to make us. Come on, talk about you. He has to make us lie down. That's why Paul had to live with the thorn in his flesh for three years because God had to make him talk back to me if you can. That's why, that's why you, you were able to get over that divorce and that man walked out in your life because sometimes God, that old, if I, I had, we got six years. Six years, and I'm going to tell you, they, they are good, but I got one renegade. <laughs> Don't look at me, you got three and got a renegade. <laughs> I got one, if you tell her to go left, she's going to go right. I told that girl, I said, don't get me wrong, don't take this wrong. I told her, while you living in my house, you can't have no tattoo. Now, you, you can't. Nothing's wrong. I am. I'm not telling you. That's my house. Don't go home, but it's my house. And I'm going to put the back of it. And girl, that's what happened to my house. I said, as long as you eat my food, you're not going to have no. And I got two boys. I said, you're not going to get no earring. Not in my house. My, my, my renegade. <laughs> She got out of my house and she tatted it down. Oh, that, <laughs> she got some and she and, 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 and she'll come over. She'll come over and go swim and she'll let me see. <laughs> you can't do. You can't do nothing about it. I'm 37 years old. And I looked, I said, Chris, you gotta look, CC, I'm gonna put your name right there. <laughs> Let me, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you something. Sometimes God will make you, make you lie down. We, did, we tried to do the best we could with these kids. And these kids will make you lie down. But you know what knocks me out? What knocks me out? Jesus even made, God even made Jesus Christ lie down. Can I go a little deeper? You remember, you remember when he went to the garden in Matthew chapter 26? The Bible says there come to Jesus to a place called Gethsemane. And, and he said unto his disciples, he said, guys, sit here. Watch for me while I go yonder and pray. Now get this now. The Bible says in verse 37 that he became sorrowful. The word lopeo in the Greek, which means he had some uninvited pain. But the text picked up momentum and said he was very, very heavy. After the nail, which means that was three words, which means that he was overcome by grief. Notice now, you gotta get it. He had some un uninvited pain. He was overcome with grief. Then the Bible says in verse 38, then he says, my soul, oh, Jesus said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Pelopalupos, which means pair me. He said, he said, grief, I was surrounded by grief. But Luke picks up on the physical side and says, when Jesus began to sweat, he said, it was great drops of blood. Yeah. Beloved, you got to understand something. That is an unusual phenomenon which is called humanidrosis. You see, it, 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 it describes dehydration when the vitamin K is depleted and causes the blood to coagulate and ooze out of the pores, not at 
and sweat for his blood and Jesus dropped down to his knees. I'm telling you, God knocked him on the seat and he dropped down to his knees and he said, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, if it be thy will, take away the See, God will make you lie down. But can I tell you something? He don't make you lie down anywhere. The text says in green pastures. Oh, See, sometimes we lie down. And we lie down, and we don't lie down in green pastures. Do you know most scholars suggest to us that green pastures was young grass? It was young, it was healthy, it would build up the body, it would strengthen us. Beloved, yeah. when we make, when we are made to lie down, beloved, we ought to lie down and be nourished and, and be stronger. Why is it that when we come out of situations, instead of being stronger, instead of being strong, you don't got now where everything just breaks you down. No strength, no faith, no nothing. And, I, and, and can I drop this in while I'm in the neighborhood? When you think small, when, well, y'all take this. I'm sorry. Well, at, at another church, I don't want to lie. <laughs> but at my church, I got a brother down there. Every time we want to do something, I just don't take it. You know, all right? I think you ought to lose your mind to him, man. He said, we need a parking lot. We need a parking lot. And, 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 and we had the land. We had the space. We had the land. And you know, I'm just real, y'all. I just tell the truth. You don't get this from every preacher. I just tell the truth. Bro, put so much pressure on you. Oh, man, I didn't take it this one too much. Okay? Because that can't do that right now. That's right now. So, so, so I called the brother uh -huh. to help us do the parking lot. And we needed a retention pond. Well, I found out that the retention pond was going to almost cost us as much as the parking lot. Well, I got the hookup. Well, bro, came and tell me, say, hey, man, look. I can this for you. Let me come here about 11 o'clock. Y'all come to church in the morning. And that thing will be poor. I put behind my brother's back. And I said, brother, we can get this thing about 90 grand. You can get it that little brother. <laughs> yeah, I said, 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 And go buy a new building and have it. Well, we have to pay all of these big notes. 
church. So what I did, because I said, God, you are you are a big God, yes. but you have me to be wise. We renovated about five hundred thousand dollars worth of work, and when they completed it, we don't owe them one dollar. Amen. And you know what? And we ask our members the only way we're going to be able to do this is if we all get together and make it work. Can I drop this in my neighborhood? The one who did the most complaining gave the list. You can always tell them, okay, I'm going to leave that line. I'm going home, y'all. I'm going home if I had to drop a bomb now. You know, the, the old man used to say, if you throw a rock in a pack of dogs, the one that hit it, that's the one that's going to fall. We said, big dog. Yeah. David said, when you make, when, when, I, when you go through stuff in your family, my marriage is strong now, but it's 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like this in 50, at 15. It wasn't like this at 10. It wasn't like this at 5. Yeah, we had to grow. We had to go through some heartache. We had to go through some turmoil. But we said that we made a commitment. Come hell or high water, we gonna stay together. We went through some stuff. We went through some stuff. Our church went through some stuff. If I had time, I tell you how to how not to church. You know what? And every time he said our church, he talks about the church. That church is going now. But it ain't always been like that. We went, when we went through those great pastors, we learned some stuff in the text What I learned about New Haven. You guys have been made to lay down. But God didn't make you lay down in any pastor. He made you lay down in green pastor. Now that you are crazy, you ought to just eat and be nervous. You ought not make the same mistakes you made before. You ought to roll up your, oh God, I wish I had grand If that was ever time to shout, you ought to be shouting. And say, we on our way, Jack. Nothing's gonna hold us back. Are you hearing me? Let me say this. Is, oh my God. Watch this. He said, after he maketh me, then he leadeth me. But he don't lead me anywhere. The text says, he lead me toward steel. Oh. Now, before we understand, before we understand the source of the water, sis was educated to me last night. I knew this was like this for sheep, but I didn't know this was like this for human. The sheep body is made up of 70% of water. His whole body is 70% water. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. The fluid is used to, to maintain his body mortalism. Beloved, if those fluids keep the sheep body normal, it keeps him, it, it keeps his fun, his organs function. Water, a dependence of water, the sheep gets weak, he has no strength, and he, the, the, uh, uh, any disturbance, she, sheep was scared. So a sheep would go and drink water and get scared. They would run and they wouldn't drink. As a result, that strength would fall. <laughs> Beloved, dehydration of the tissues would lead their body to serious end. Uh, 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 damage. Uh, they will shed their coat. So any disturbance at all, at all, would cause them to need clean water and drink from potholes where they would flake up their liver and have all kind of damage. David said, Lord, don't leave me to pothole water. He said, don't leave me. Leave me to clean water. Clean water is peace. Peace. The sheep could drink peace. Peace. Beloved, peace. Some of us are designed. We'd rather get on the building and have trouble than to stay on the ground and have peace. What do you drink? What, what fountain are you drinking from? Can I, can I drop this in? Uh, one, one of the guys asked me, I don't know preacher there, I don't know the elders there, but, but that ain't my church. I'm a student there. I'm a student. I was put there to work. I work just like everybody else. I probably, 
married to somebody. Yeah. I want somebody to tell you about my marriage who, 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 who has yeah. a marriage problem. Yeah. Oh, don't come up here trying to front on me talking about you ain't never had no problem. You've been married over six minutes, you've had problems. Yeah. 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 Like you ain't got no problem. No, you can't tell me that. Don't come telling me how to raise my kids and you ain't got no You don't know. Don't tell me how to do that. Don't tell me. But, 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 but we need to be restored. The church needs to be restored. But we need to be put back. Let me tell you something. Our homes need to be restored. Solomon, uh, uh, David said in Psalm 127, except the Lord build a house. They labor in vain that build it. Who's building your house? Man, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Our marriages need to be restored. Do you not know even in the church, one out of every, uh, I, I looked it up today, 52% of every first time marriages in the divorce. Mm -hmm. Well, I said 65, 65 percent of second time marriages in the divorce. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the one that knocked me out. 75 percent of third time marriages in the divorce. I was trying to figure out, well, why? It looked like that about the third time you ought to have it together. <laughs> but, 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 but I kept on reading and I found out that the third time they just don't take no mess. <laughs> I took that mess off that first one. I took out, I'm not there. It, it ain't going down like that. I'm a, oh, okay, I'm up. <laughs> but they need to be restored. Our homes need to be restored. They need to look like a Christian home. <laughs> We ought to go back to the original and restore the church. Go back to where it used to be. This ain't where it started. It started in Acts chapter 2. But the Bible said they were praising God and having fire. If you want to go back to the original, go back to praising God. And having faith. You want to grow a church? It said, it said, it said, it said, it said, it said, it said. Matter of fact, read it. I want to show them. I ain't making this up. Acts chapter 2, verse number 4 7. The Bible said, praising God, plus having favor with all the people, equal to the Lord and to the church. Amen. Because why the Lord ain't added to the church, some of us ain't praising God. Some of us praising God, but not having favor with the people. He said, if, if you want the formula, it's praising God, plus having favor with the people, equal to the Lord and to the child. Watch this, 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 The Bible said, the Bible said, he said, he needed me in the path of righteousness for his name. He said, see, she was notorious creatures of heaven. Left to themselves, they would eat on the same ground, they would, they would go back and forth, they would graze in the same hill, they would sit there and, and have their waist and turn right around and eat it. But now watch this, a shepherd, a good shepherd, would lead the sheep to do grazing path. He would follow the tracks of another shepherd, or he would have the sheep to stay together. He would go back and forth, back and forth. What happens when you keep walking back and forth on the same spot? You made a path. The sheep knew that I had to stay on this side of the path because the foxes were over there. Our problem with the church is we want one foot over here. And then when I back, Get against the wall. Okay, so the shepherd did not lead his sheep with danger. We I don't know if y'all know much about uh, Houston, Texas, because Houston, where we actually live, is not far from Lake Charles. Lake Charles is one of the biggest gambling places uh, in the nation. All the Cachado and all of that kind of stuff down there. And one of my problems when I was in the world, I was a gambler. So, so, so I don't think that's I love it. I told you last night, I think I sung the old song, old school song. Last. I love, I love old school stuff. Where, where the Isley Brothers was coming down to the shop. I said, Mom, I said, Mom, I said, let me tell you something. I know what they're doing on that side, but uh, I'm going to be on this side. We're going to be over on 
this. And she said, boy, I'm going to get you some CDs or something. You're not going. Because the path of righteousness, you don't want to have one foot in. And then why did some of them, I'll never sign that up again. <laughs> He would anoint their heads with 
with oil. Now they can go and eat because the snake can slip up and bite He can eat in the presence of the Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? So he says, surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall do it. See, goodness is from, is from my slips. His mercy is from my fall. And they're following me. Not just on Sunday morning. Well, I mean, I, I'm getting happy up there, y'all. Not just on Sunday nights, but every day it's following me. Because every now and then I slip. Are you hearing me? Beloved, who's your shepherd today? Is the Lord your shepherd? Don't fool me. Don't fool me. I didn't ask you if you know the Lord. I ask you, do the Lord know you? See, see let me tell you something. I know Barack Obama. All right. Well, right now. <laughs> but Barack don't know me. <laughs> Guess what? I know facts about Barack. I know he's married to Michelle. I know he has two kids. I know he's glad he's out of the White House. I know facts. But just because I know a few facts don't mean I know them. See, some of us know a few facts about Jesus. We know he married his baby. Yeah. We know he was born in a manger. We know he was crucified. We know he died and was in a grave. You can know facts and not know Amen. I don't know why my heart is heavy tonight because I believe that it's somebody here who really, really wants to know the Lord. Let me tell you. I don't know if, uh, if, if we were in the latest class, but the Bible teaches us that there's four types of worship. The Bible says it. I don't know. We're in the men's class. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Right now. Come on. Right. Let me tell you. Let me help you. He said, forgot. But now, one of them is called. Now, now, hold on. Hold on. You did good. I got the rest of it. Let me finish it. You did a good job. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. That's what it's called. Vain wish. The Bible says in Mark 7 and 7, how be it? And rarely do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. That's vain worship. That's empty worship. But then the Bible talks about real worship. In Galatians chapter 2, verse number 23, he talked about will. In other words, worshiping God according to your will. To your way. Oh, I wish I had time to, to, to make this thing down. But then he talked about even worship in Acts chapter 17. You remember when they passed Mars Hill and they had a phone uh, 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 inscripted, the unknown God not accept vain worship. He does not accept real worship. He does not accept infant worship. God is looking for true worship. For the Bible say God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. How do you know if I have the truth? Then you ask yourself some questions. Am I doing what the Bible says? Am I, am I communing with the Lord? Every first day of the week? Or am I doing it once a month? But God says upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together, they pray praying. But Brother Lynn, but it didn't say every first day. Well, if every first day have a first day, if every, first, every week have a first day, then why would Okay, you missed it. If you went on the job and they said we pay on Friday, guess what they don't have to say? We pay every Friday. You let a Friday pass and you ain't got your money. Man, I want my money, y'all. <laughs> the Bible says remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. He didn't say remember every Sabbath, but if every week had one. Remember, you ought, you ought to do an examination and see if what I'm doing is consistent with the word of God. And if it's not, then I ought to be able to ask questions. One of the reasons, and let me tell you, I love, I love, I love the church that I grew up in. Unfortunately, when I went back and asked questions, yeah. I couldn't get some answers. And then when I began to push 
they say, he must be studying in the church of Christ. He said, you better leave them folks alone. But I said, them folks are giving me Luke chapter and verse. And, and let, me, let me go ahead now and close this. That was a boy who graduated from Oxford University. Graduated school, school, come on, that's it. That's it, I look down and say, that's, 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 what, that's what I'm about to say. Now watch this, at the commencement service, they called this boy up and they told him, they said, now what we want you to do is we want you to pose the 23rd song. He was very distinct in his walk. He walked very professional. He made his way to the podium. He began to quote the 23rd song. When he finished, everybody in the building Stood up, gave him a round of applause. The boy got the big end and saw an old man sitting over in the corner. He said, Old oh, man, you over there. He said, You come do what I just did. The old man made his way up, knees hurting, back hurting, couldn't have to come up the steps. He got up to the podium and he struggled all through the 23rd century. Struggled, called some things that wasn't. When he finished, you see. In the house. It shocked the boy. He said, wait a minute. When I quoted, all I got was a hand clap. He said, but when he quoted, everybody's crying. He said, what's the difference? He said, you know the song. He knows the show. Yeah. Can I ask a question tonight? Do you know the song? Do you know the shepherd? Beloved, you ought to learn the shepherd tonight. You ought to say, I want to know the shepherd. I don't want to know the song. I want to know the shepherd. Because the Lord is my shepherd. But I want to follow you. I want to live to you. I want to do the best I can. My breath is still in my body. You know, anytime you have a fire, listen. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, I'm going home in the morning. I'm going home in the morning. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, I'm a, I, I, I just want to leave this with you. And I don't know, I don't know if, 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 this is, if this is how you've been taught. I don't know if it's a tradition that you don't want to break. But let me tell you, I've got a better view up here. And I can see it. And I can see the anger and the depression and the hurt in your heart. And yet, when the invitation is you won't even come down the aisle and ask for prayer. You walk out of here. I, 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 I told my baby, I, I, see, you too, because I'm telling you, at invitation time, man, we, we understand that prayer change things. God said, if you be ashamed of me, young lady, I'm going to be ashamed of you. Man, if you know you got some problems and you need prayer, how in the world can you walk out of here? Knowing your house ain't right. Knowing you ain't right. Knowing you separated from God. And God says, if you confess those sins, I'm faithful and just to forgive you. And you're going to walk out of here the same way you walk in? Yeah. Something's wrong with that. I told you, you starving and shopping shop. What is this? Shopping shop. Beloved, beloved. What I want you to do, if you have not been baptized, and it's not as late as it was, so when we stand up, don't walk out on me. Just give us 10 minutes, because this is, this is, this is really important. Unless you have to go, you got to go with certain understanding. If you have not been baptized for the remission of your sin tonight, you don't have to know the whole Bible. All you have to know is Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And all you have to know is that, 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 that baptism is for the remission of the removing of your sins. Then when you get baptized, they don't teach you the rest. They don't teach you. Got to, you, you got to understand that it puts me in the body of Christ. Beloved, if you're here tonight, your mission is I love you. I'm not, I'm not going to wait no song. I'm coming, preacher. Because I've heard this gospel. I believe it with all of my heart. I'm willing to repent of my sin. That's the sweetest name on my tongue. I'm willing to be baptized. And I'm telling you, the water's ready. Yeah. Clothes are ready. The men are ready. The saints are ready. The angels are ready. 
I remember, I remember when I walked down. I was baptized, man. I went down. An old, dirty, dope head, weed smoking, dice shooting, crushing. Jesus, cause I know it's going